All righty then, it's seven o'clock and I'd like to call this City Council, Urbana City Council Committee of the Whole meeting to order. Would the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Adams, Here. Mr. Brown, Here. Mr. Jacobson, Here. Mr. Madigan is entering, Ms. Marlin. Here. Mr. Roberts. Here. Mr. Smythe. Here. Mayor Pressing. Here. Are there any additions to the agenda? No. Do we have a staff report? Libby Tyler. We're um, fighting over who's going to mention the open house coming up, but I did want to mention that we had a very successful Urbana Art Expo yesterday at the Civic Center. We had um, something like 350 plus people come through. The quality of the art was excellent. Uh, the venue worked well, and I wanted to thank Pauline Tenos and the Public Arts Commission and 40 North, all the artists and all the other people who were involved. I know that some of you attended as well, so I um, wanted to mention that. Also, um, for those of you who like to read big, long documents, we do have a draft <laughs> caper, uh, which is our consolidated annual performance and evaluation report out for review and uh, working on completing revisions to that for the final document, but it is available um, in hard copy form at the library and on the website and city clerk's office. And uh, we're looking for comments by September 24th. Then at a later date, we'll be bringing the completed draft to the Community Development Commission and the City Council for review and approval. That's all I have. Thank you. Any other staff reports? Bill Gray, Director <coughs> of Public Works. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to bring to you to the public's attention the Multimodal Corridor Enhancement Project, otherwise known as MCOR, will have its open house Thursday, September 17th at the Alumni Center, Alice Campbell Alumni Center, 601 South Lincoln Avenue. There's two opportunities to attend and see, uh, visit the open house, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., and the second is 4 to 6 p.m. Um, it's important for the public to at least be aware of this project in Urbana. It impacts Green Street between Rice Street and Wright Street. Construction would be starting in 2016, so a year from now, literally, we would start construction on the stretch <coughs> between Busey and Wright. This um, will probably impact everyone that travels throughout the community just because of the street networks that are going to be involved here. It's hard to avoid Green Street no matter which way you would travel. So. Uh, we want you to be aware of uh, the design. There's some pretty substantial changes and um, know of the construction schedule. And again, uh, Urbana's commitment to this project, which involves rebuilding green in two phases or two stages. The first would be, again, between Busey and Wright starting next year <coughs> and lasting two construction seasons and, seasons. and then the second part would be <coughs> race street between excuse me, Green Street between Race and Busey. That would start in 2018, finish in 2019. So again, this Thursday at the Ellis Campbell Alumni Center. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Gray? Okay, thank you. Next up is approval of the minutes from the August 24th, 2015 meeting. Is there a motion for so approval? Moved. Second. Moved by Aaron Ammons, seconded by Eric Jacobson. Any additions or corrections? I do have one correction, page three, item 11. Urbana resident Chris Storr addressed the committee. He spoke in support of resolution number 2015, not opposition, and I confirmed that with him today. And also, correction on his name, it's S-T-O-H-R. It looks like autocorrect kicked in on, on that one. Okay, if no further, uh, any more corrections, the, could I have a, uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, those pass. Next up is public input. 
I have two cards, uh, one from Reverend Dr. Evelyn Underwood and Reverend King James Underwood. They do not wish to address the committee, but ask that their concerns be entered into the record, that they are continually concerned about the Dr. Ellis subdivision sewer problems. And uh, Matthew Riggs wishes to address the committee at the time of his agenda item, and that would be the uh, text amendment to the zoning ordinance. Any other persons wish to speak? Dennis? Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to um, add to public comment from, from this perspective. Um, you, uh, we, we thought we might have a discussion item tonight, but we didn't quite get that straightened out, so we'll probably bring it back again next week. But I just wanted to mention it in general, and I, so I have a memo here about it. Um, and I just want to read that. Um, the mayor and the city council recently toured the Boneyard Creek between West Main Street and West Springfield to observe uh, problems in land subsidence in the area and to view properties either recently demolished or scheduled for demolition and to consider issues for new development along the creek and to consider the desire to acquire easements along the Boneyard for future pathways and other city amenities. Uh, with the possibility open for new future development along western sections of the Boneyard Creek, not currently included in the Boneyard Creek uh, Beautification Master Plan. Uh, it is important to define a larger vision for the Boneyard Creek in Urbana and to expand the mission and purpose of the Boneyard Creek Commission and the Boneyard Creek Commissioner. Therefore, I and several other members of council um, feel that it might be wise to explore the possibility of expanding the membership of the Boneyard Creek Commission to reestablish it as a regular standing commission with open meetings and a published meeting schedule. Uh, its mission would be to advise other city boards, commissions, and the city council regarding future development along the Boneyard Creek, to review all planning documents with respect to the Boneyard Creek, to lead planning and seek funding for the development of a complete linear pack park for the Boneyard Creek from the University of Illinois campus west of uh, Lincoln Avenue through the current easternmost section five. That's at five points as defined by the Boneyard Creek Improvement Project designed by Wink Associates and adopted in May of 2008 and listed among the goals of the 2015 Mayor and City Council goals document, which the, was adopted by the City Council. So this discussion would allow the City Council to better serve the community in regard to the preservation and development of Boneyard Creek as a major um, city amenity. Um, uh, although we expected the, uh, the this item to appear as a discussion item for tonight, we're going to be asking that the, it appear next week on the Monday, September 21st agenda as a discussion item. So um, that's um, from myself and uh, also from Charlie Smythe. Just wanted to share that with you as an upcoming um, item for consideration. Thank you. Any other public input? Aaron? Yes, I just want to strongly encourage the public uh, and any of us who will be in town on September 17th in the evening to attend the labor in Champaign County uh, history. Uh, it's going. To, it's a free event uh, talking about the history of the labor movement and its importance to uh, Illinois, uh, sponsored by our wonderful state representative, Carol Lammons. Mm -hmm. And um, there's going to be some uh, good information shared by Stephanie Sewell, who's the executive director of Illinois Labor History Society. Uh, there will be a dinner. It's free. Folks should come out. It's at the Labor Hall uh, on Anthony Drive. I believe it's 108 East Anthony Drive in Urbana. Any other announcements? Okay. Uh, first item on the agenda is resolution number 2015-09-048R, which is a resolution authorizing the entry into and execution of an agreement between the City of Urbana and the Community Foundation of East Central Illinois, and that's related to the Urbana Public Television. And we have a staff report. Good evening. Uh, I'm Jake Schumacher, um, station manager for Urbana Public Television. 
and it's a pleasure to appear before you for the first time. Uh, with me is Sanford Hess, my supervisor and the head of IT. Uh, this is, uh, uh, I'll make it as short and sweet as I can. This is, uh, uh, we seek approval to enter into an agreement with the Community Foundation of East Central Illinois uh, to, uh, uh, for a non-endowed fund that would be used in support of Urbana Public Television broadcasting and activities. As you know, we uh, broadcast all of the city council meetings. We essentially are the audiovisual arm of the city, in addition to serving as an educational station and a public access station. Uh, the agreement that we seek is identical or nearly identical to that uh, which you have uh, already approved for the Legacy Tree Program and the Public Arts Program. Uh, and it would enable us to uh, do some fundraising for people that wish to support things like our broadcast of Urbana High School Sports, our work with the schools and things like that. And I want to particularly thank Jim Simon and Sanford for helping me through this process because I'm brand new to this. Um, but I'll be happy to answer any questions. Charlie. Yeah, real quick. Uh, will this like allow you to say sponsored by such and such in say when you do a sp I sports broadcast? I probably broadcast. would not use the word sponsored, but but a typical kind of public broadcasting underwriting circumlocution. Right, yeah, okay. You know, uh, acknowledging made possible the underwriters, by. yes, made yeah. possible by, yeah, yeah. okay, okay. That, that's our goal. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, I, I strongly support this. Any other questions? Eric? So one of the things that I think would be great would be if this would enable you uh, to do some representation of, uh, of arts in Urbana and especially projects that are supported by the Public Arts Commission. So I, I, I think this is great and I hope there'll be a, a coordination uh, between you and, and Pauline to make this be a, a, good, uh, a good outlet, for example, for some of the performing uh, Arts that we uh, that we support to to actually capture these in um, in in video and be able to preserve them and uh, you know pass them on for future years. I absolutely concur. And as you know, we we do the Art Now program once a month. Mm -hmm. um, one of our production interns uh, recorded and produced broadcast of the uh, Neighborhood Nights performances that the Urbana Park District supports. Um, and quite frankly, I think that Urbana Public Television is a public art in itself. So um, whatever, whatever we can do to facilitate the documentation and presentation and promotion of the arts in Urbana is something we're very interested in doing. So I appreciate that. Aaron? So when I read through the resolution or the, I'm sorry, the, uh, the memo basically stating what you want to accomplish, it said that it would, the money would be used to assist in the annual funding of UPTV. And my question, I just want to clarify, is this money going to be used as extra things so that we can sort of expand UPTV capabilities, or is this going to be supplemental to what you normally get as annual funding uh, from this, uh, from from the city coffers, basically. Well, yeah, the annual funding is is the the peg fee from from Comcast, and I think we're viewing this as an opportunity to make sure that um, the income e equals the outgo. <laughs> and if we have um, if we have the ability to raise a funds for additional uh, services, we would certainly go in that direction. Right now, we just want to make sure that we cover our budget as it stands. Um, you know, just because uh, there is a certain decline in cable revenues mm -hmm. that uh, I think we can all foresee. So, all right, thank you. Yeah, Dennis. Yeah. Um, so the this is the same uh, agreement that the tree commission the tree commission has had for um, the uh, legacy tree program, and uh, the arts council has been using it. Um, has has the uh, uh, ability to uh, use this um, um, foundation been uh, very successful so far for the city? Do you? I don't know if you would know personally or not, but I'm wondering how. Yeah, uh, I don't wh whether this has no. been making a difference yet for these two different entities. Yeah, I don't. I, I actually I should have had a chance to talk with Pauline about this, but 
we've both been pretty busy, but I am curious to know what kind of results they have. We did meet with Joan Dixon, and yes. you know these are um, these are funds that are not expected to be you know multi-million dollar <laughs> funds right. anytime in the near future, right. um, and the amount of, of staff time that we can put into fundraising, you know, is a question because we're minimally staffed as it is, but we're going to try to rearrange duties so that we can actively pursue this because we don't want to just excuse me we don't want to just have the fund and then let it sit there you know we want it to grow so uh, and I ask this partly because of um, you know we've had discussions within the um, uh, Urbana sister city committee about um, you know uh, the ability to fund a project an exchange with a school in a different area or travel Things that um, you know are what would you know the things that would enrich the activities of uh, international interactions, and you know these all come at a price, and um, it's very difficult to uh, to make those meet those needs. So I'm just sort of wondering. I'd be very curious to see um, what activities prove to be successful for you in the future. Yeah, we you know we have the advantage of having a television station, so <laughs> that allows us a certain uh, ability to reach out to the public that that uh, should help us in this case. Charlie, I move to send this to council with recommendation for approval. Second, moved by Charlie, seconded by Aaron. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed. Okay, that passes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Maybe you can raise enough money to bring Big Bird back to <laughs> public television. <laughs> We'd love to. Ordinance number 2015-07-08R, which is an ordinance amending the zoning ordinance of the City of Urbana, Illinois, an omnibus text amendment, plan case 2254-T15, and community development. Kevin Garcia. Greetings. Um, I will try and keep this pretty brief. There are only a uh, few items to follow up on. Um, but this is, this is really a, a follow-up to um, the omnibus text amendment that was first presented uh, back on August 3rd. Um, attached, you will find, attached to your memo, you'll find a revised version of the proposed ordinance um, reflecting uh, the staff's recommendations. Um, the so when we brought this uh, to council back on August 3rd there were some questions uh, that that council asked that that staff um, do a little more research on so so that's what I'll be presenting uh, here tonight uh, the first was we had proposed allowing duplexes and extended occupancy duplexes in the R7 zoning district with a conditional use permit um, after reviewing the case history of the R7 district uh, we feel that any changes to the R7 district would benefit from more study. Um, so we um, are proposing the withdrawal uh, of the changes that we had previously uh, proposed um, with, the possible, with the possibility of, of uh, reevaluating the R7 district in the future. Um, the second issue, um, there was a, a question regarding coffee roastery as a, a potential use and I think this came about because there have been um, two uh, proposed developments uh, the first being the Broadway market the second being a 303 West Grigg Street um, and two of the both those proposals um, have mentioned coffee roastery as a potential um, use um, in those redevelopments um, but regarding um, Regarding things or regarding uses that are not specifically listed in the table of uses in the Urbana Zoning Ordinance, um, when they're not specifically mentioned in, in there, the zoning administrator is allowed to um, determine the use that most closely resembles uh, the use in question. Um, and in the case of a coffee roastery, we feel that um, that our uh, existing uses of a bakery. Um, or a cafe or deli would be appropriate um, depending on whether the the coffee roasting is a main use or an incidental use uh, to a cafe um, so for instance for the Broadway market um, that use that proposed use would be incidental to a cafe because they were um, they'd be proposing um, a coffee shop there as well uh, for 303 West Griggs Street it would be more of a uh, a main use so we would consider it more like a, a bakery of less than 2,500 square feet um, 
So we don't feel that at this time it's necessary to add coffee roastery as a separate use to the zoning ordinance. Uh, the, final, the final item um, deals with electronic signs and the regulations pertaining to um, really the, the brightness of signs. Um, so there were a few questions that that council had um, dealing with the proposed changes. Um, the first was uh, just regarded what effect the proposed changes would have on the brightness of signs. Um, and there was a question about how the proposed changes would compare to what we're proposing for digital billboards. Uh, there was also a question as to whether existing signs would be required to conform um, to the proposed changes or if they'd be uh, grandfathered in. Um, and along with that, there was some concern that the signs that exist in town uh, might not have the technology required to um, automatically dim um, as, as, we're, um, as is in the proposal. Um, so the council requested that we look um, or that we take an inventory of existing signs and study this further. Um, on page two of your memo, you can see that we did do, uh, we did go out and inventory um, the signs um, with respect to uh, the question regarding if the uh, whether the proposed changes would would pertain to um, to existing signs um, in our, our research we we found that um, back in September 2009 we added the provision that digital signs would require automatic dimming technology so there there are only three digital signs that um, that were approved before that part of the ordinance um, or before the ordinance was amended to include that um, so there's really only three signs that um, that aren't already required to meet uh, the automatic dimming requirement um, and we would propose that those be allowed um, to be grand grandfathered in and not have to conform to um, the proposals that we're making but the rest, the rest should be equipped with with the automatic dimming, so they should be should be allowed to to meet these requirements. Um, I think w one interesting thing to note, uh, as we did the the sign inventory, is that if you if you look at the table, you'll see that um, the average size of the sign is only <coughs> of, of current digital signs is only about 20 feet. Uh, all the signs are under uh, 35 square feet, and most of them are are under 25 square feet. And the the existing um, requirements for measuring the signs go from says a sign from between zero and 100 square feet, and that's the the smallest distance we're measuring. Um, but really, the the regulations that we have on the books aren't really, I think, reflective of of what's actually on the ground. Um, so this proposal uh, would, I think, address. Um, uh, and would take a, a more nuanced approach to, to actually regulating the signs that as they exist and probably the signs as we'll see in the future. Um, so regarding uh, the effects <coughs> on, on sign brightness, um, this was um, something that I, I was not really uh, schooled in before and I, I think I've got a, a pretty good grasp of it now. Um, the bottom line, I think, is that the proposed changes would decrease um, the the proposed or the perceived brightness um, of signs, um, basically because we'd be measuring the signs closer to the to the sign face, um, and we would, um, yeah, we'd be measuring them closer to the sign face. Um, and just because of the way that that sign brightness works, um, the further you get away, um, the the brightness goes down. As it's, I think it's an inverse square um, equation because uh, you're looking at area. Um, so there's a table on page three of the memo. As you can see, we we tried to compare the um, the existing brightnesses um, on at the face of the sign to the, the proposed brightnesses according to the, the recommendations that we're making. And you'll see, especially for the smaller signs, um, I chose 11 square feet for, for one of the examples because that is the smallest uh, digital sign we have now. 
Um, so signs 25 feet or less would be 75% less less bright as a maximum compared to um, what we what we currently allow. Um, let's see. So I think I think that really sums up uh, my report. I'd be happy to to answer any questions. Um, and I so I'd say that. Uh, with respect to this case, um, City Council has the options to approve the proposed text amendment, um, to approve the proposed text amendment um, with specific changes, or to deny the proposed amendment. Um, I think there's an additional um, option, which is if there's something that you feel requires more study, I think we we could strike that out and and pass the you know pass the amendment. That might be included in in the option of of approving the proposed text amendment amendment with changes um, but I just want to put that out there so if because um, we, we feel that most of, of the proposed changes are important to get to get passed um, sooner rather than later so if there's something that requires more study um, you do have the option of, of asking that we make that a separate case uh, the Urbana Plan Commission voted 8 to 0 to recommend approval of the proposed changes and staff would also recommend approval and I will take any questions Charlie yeah um, thanks <coughs> I'm losing my voice uh, sorry um, <coughs> you showed me a formula a few minutes ago before you jumped into this uh, that would sort of replace the tables uh, and is that or is that just simply uh, how you that's how you calculated these tables would you incorporate that into the ordinance well, these uh, so these tables were um, were based on a report um, from the International uh, Sign Association, and when I went back earlier today and looked at at um, at that report, I realized that they had a pretty simple formula in there um, for how to measure brightness um, and the distance the distance um, that you would measure the brightness at. Um, unfortunately, I did not have time to. Um, to create uh, um, like an additional memo to share with everyone, so I didn't feel comfortable bringing that to the table without um, without being able to to show it to the entire council. Um, but that's certainly something I think we could look into. Yeah, I, I guess I would, you know, if, if we adopt this, I would encourage using that formula in here instead of tables that say zero to this or you know zero to 25 feet or whatever or one to 25 feet or because the formula is just you know basically tells you per you know based on the square feet that this is the brightness that would be that would correspond to what we're after the other choice we have here is do we want 0.25 or 0.3 as the brightness level and again that formula can easily in incorporate whatever choice we want to make here so i would encourage us to Ask that you bring back the memo for next week and incorporate, you know, incorporate that into the into the ordinance. Eric, so I'm looking at the table and I don't understand. If I understand the table rightly, and maybe I don't, I don't see a difference between the current and the proposed. That is, it says that the distance. For example, let's look at 11 foot sign. It says that at 50 feet, it measures 734. At 100 feet, um, it measures 29.35. That's a ratio of four, which is two squared. So, it, so I think that the the brightness, the inherent brightness of the sign, is exactly the same in the current and proposed. If I'm reading the table correctly, maybe I don't have the right understanding. Yeah, and it, this stuff's not. It's not easy to to wrap your head around, and I'm I'm still wrapping my head around it. Um, but it's it's also it's possible that I could have labeled the the table headings a little bit better. Um, that brightness is what the the brightness of the sign would be at its face. Um, it's not um, right. So it's it's not what you would actually be uh, measuring. Uh, so it's it's how bright the sign would be if you were standing right next to the sign. So I I can see how the table could be 
um, yeah, it is kind of hard to understand oh, because yeah, of that. Because, because, so, yeah, right. Be because because it, by, as it happens, that, yeah, okay, N now I understand it. But as it happens, it, it looks as though it's the, the two signs are exactly the same brightness because I was interpreting the, the brightness measurement as being at that distance. But also, um, I think also, so if you're if you're measuring something, if you were measuring something at at um, 100 feet, and and the brightness measure is higher, and you're measuring something at 50 feet, and the brightness measure is lower, then as you go out, it's going to get less bright. Still, sure. though, yeah, right? By, by the square of the distance, right? Yeah. By yeah, like the in, the inverse square, I, I think is how you describe it, but. Yeah, the brightness goes as the inverse square, right? Any other questions? Mike. Yeah, so being a barbecue major and not a math major, <laughs> <laughs> I just have to understand. So an 11 square foot sign, uh, the last column says that the difference in the max brightness allowed proposed slash current yes one quarter or 75 percent less bright yeah so does that, that mean that we are going to require these signs to be 75 percent less bright than today as a max yes um but i i don't think you'd find i i don't think that 11 square foot sign is even close to what the max brightness allowable is presently. So, um, and I I haven't been out to to measure all the signs um, or any signs actually, but I have a feeling that they're all in compliance with our current standards anyway. Um, so we wouldn't be going out and saying all you folks with signs 25 square feet and less, you have to turn them down 75% from what they're at right now. I think they're in compliance with what's on the books and with what, what's being proposed. Um, but I think we're, we're changing the requirements just so that they're easier to administer and so they make more sense. Um, but, but would we be asking people to turn their signs down 75%? I, I, really do not think we would be doing that okay but we don't know correct all right well then I guess I would suggest that we make that survey uh, before we enact anything we ought to find out just what we're doing and don't get me wrong I appreciate the work you've done on this uh, and I understand the concern here but I also think that we ought to do justice to the business that are in town and we ought to take a look at, a, a serious look at what are their signs putting out today. We ought to measure that and then uh, take some action on this. Uh, I understand that most of these signs are probably adjustable and I really appreciate you putting together a survey mm -hmm. about um, who is probably in compliance with that and the, the few that might need to be grandfathered in. Um, but I also uh, think that it would be prudent for the council to, to ask the staff to survey the businesses, not survey the businesses, but actually measure the signs uh, that are out there today and see just what they are putting off uh, and who we are impacting and by how much. I just think that's a reasonable thing to do. I agree, and I can go out this week and take those measurements. Great. Mayor Pressing? Uh, is there an industry standard for the brightness, and is this proposed standard typical of what other cities are doing? Yes, yes to both, both questions. Okay. Um, yeah, this was based off of the report um, over um, recommendations from the International Sign Association. Okay, thank you. Yes. Bill? And I'd just point out that um, even with the proposed changes for the 11 square foot sign, the brightness at the sign would be 734 um, candelas or nits, I guess. Um, but 
the brightness for a digital billboard like you see in Champaign is currently 242, so it'd, it'd still allow it to be three times brighter than a digital billboard, basically. So we aren't talking about making them dim, but I'm not opposed to measuring some and seeing, seeing who it would impact. I think the reason it's important to get these shorter distances is, like you said, point, you pointed out that we really don't have any signs greater, more than 35 square feet, so it doesn't make sense to measure them as though they were 100 square feet. I think was about what the 100 foot distance um, would have been appropriate for. So um, yeah, I don't mind pulling this part out of the omnibus ordinance if that's what people want to do, but I think um, ultimately I'll be in favor of it the way it is. I believe I saw Charlie and then Dennis. Well, I, I guess the issue would be if this can be measured in time for next Monday so that we have the information before us, in which case we could include this section. If it can't be, then we can exclude the section. So I think that's a, an easy thing to do, and I'll, I'll offer to give you a hand on going and measuring these. Uh, I think we have a light meter, right, to use for this? We yeah, do, yeah. yeah. I have it on so, my desk. Yeah, I just need a 50-foot tape measure. Um, so I'll, I'll give you a hand. Um, I'm a night owl anyway. Um, and uh, so so I think, uh, I think the real issue is, is it 0.3 or 0.25 that we ultimately uh, sent forward on this, you know, just to have mm -hmm. a standard mm -hmm. item. Mm -hmm. So my question actually for you is, is, is the industry standard 0.3 or 0 0.25 in, in your re reading on stuff? It seems to be 0.3. Mm -hmm. uh, Dennis and then Eric. Um, and when the uh, measurement is made, does it have to be done in a certain time of day or night, or does that have an effect on the, on the brightness visibility? It, it does have an effect. Um, we are required to do it at least 30 minutes after sunset. Um, mm -hmm. And you're taking the measurements. You're looking at a difference between the ambient light and then the light with, in a best case, with the sign off. Um, but there are ways to do it if you, if you can hold something up and, and cover, cover the sign enough. Um, you can you can take a measurement that way, and then you take the the difference between the two. Um, I I'm not sure since you're since you're measuring the distance between the ambient light you're you're measuring at the time, and then the the light with the sign covered up. I don't think it matters at what time of night you do it, just as long as it's dark. And uh, are there particular signs in town that are of concern because of their maybe excessive brightness at this time? Is that why we're kind of also kind of concerned about um, setting different standard that maybe we had before? Um, I'm I'm not sure that there are um, that there are really signs of concern um, because of the regulations we have uh, as to the location of where signs can go. Um, I looked and I I can produce some maps for you all to to see for next time because I did put this into a GIS. Um, most of the signs are not even close to um, affecting, say, residential areas. I, I don't think, I'm not sure if there are any signs that really would be bleeding over um, into residential areas. I think that's where your big concern would be. Uh, most of them are, are just in business areas uh, facing other, other business, right. yeah, other commercial. Um, I, think, I think we're just, we've realized that we can do, we can do better. Um, in terms of coming up with an approach that makes a little bit more sense. So I think that's really the impetus for, for these changes. And, and I guess one, there seems to be like one or two um, signs that I see occasionally as I drive that seem to be especially bright. And I don't know if it's because so much more white is being used in the display or some other reason. But um, every time I go by one or two of these businesses, they just seem more glaring than other digital signs I've observed, so I thought maybe that was one of the reasons that you wanted to have a survey done. Okay, that's all. Yeah, thanks. Any other? Oh, Eric? So I'm assuming that one is looking for a happy balance because if the sign's too dim, it can't be read, but if it's too bright, it's going to bleach the driver's eyeballs and prevent it from prevent him or her from uh, 
from seeing the road properly. So I assume that the standards are the national standards or industry standards are designed with that trade off. But one of the things that I wanted to ask is does it make sense to have one level of brightness or should there be a daytime should there be daytime and nighttime levels? No, that's a great question. Um, so to uh, first if I can speak to the, the first comments that you made. Um, the I think the the digital sign industry recognizes that that signs can be too bright. Um, so they make recommendations for for coming up with a, a good range where people like you said won't be you know won't be blinded by them um, because really bright signs are not very legible so the the sign industry uh, understands that so I think they're they're trying to help out their the people that they're selling signs to by by saying there's a reasonable range of, of brightness um, as to the um, as to your question about daytime versus versus um, nighttime um, yes, uh, with with digital signs, it's interesting uh, because they need to be brighter during the day to be legible. Like if you go outside with with a smartphone, you need to turn up the brightness on a really sunny day, um, and at night you can turn down the brightness. It's the it's the same type of thing. Um, but since uh, I think since since you're you're measuring uh, with respect to um, to the ambient light levels that are around um, so during the day the sun can be can be very bright um, and but but if you have a standard that says you can go this much brighter than the ambient light I think that addresses it okay so the standards that we're looking at or the criteria we're looking at are brightness above ambient not not absolute correct. brightness okay. correct Any other questions? I do have one yeah. member of the public who wishes to give input on this amendment. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Um, as far as public input, Matthew Riggs, uh, whose business address is 1901 South High Cross Road, regarding this ordinance. Madam Chairman, I think I probably should uh, recuse myself. Uh, from uh, even this discussion at this point in time because I'm aware of uh, uh, what Mr. Riggs is going to uh, uh, testify about. This is regarding microbrewery. Yes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Matt Riggs. I don't have any objection to anything regarding the sign. Um, I just wanted to actually voice my support for uh, the small part of this omnibus that discusses allowing a microbrewery as a permitted use in a B3 and B4 uh, zone. I currently have a plan to start a microbrewery at the named address um, in the near future, and that would help me move along in, in my planning and execution of the business. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them either now or afterwards. Any questions for Matt? I, I guess it would be appropriate to share what your expected start date is and, and what your plans are uh, time-wise. Yeah. OK. Um, our goal is to, to open and um, yeah, be in business actually selling product on the 1st of May of 2016. So uh, Charlie, are you conflicted as a, as a devoted beer connoisseur or is that okay? <laughs> uh, no, I can't wait. <laughs> uh, Mayor and then Bill. So what is the address? 1901 South High Cross Road. Okay. T.K. Wendell's. Okay, thank you. Formerly known as. Right. Bill? Um, yeah, I, I can't find it now, but I think our limit was 15,000... 15,000 barrels per year. Barrels? Okay. Is that, is that typical? I was going to look that up before I came, but I didn't get a chance. Is that typical to definition of microbreweries? And I thought I heard talk that maybe that was too low for something like Triptych, and they were thinking about raising, or maybe I didn't. Maybe it was someplace else. Uh, 15,000 barrels, I believe, is is the 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 borderline that the trade association, the, the Brewers Association that represents the most brewers in America, has set as the upper limit of a microbrewery. Anything larger than that, they classify as a regional brewery or f far beyond that, national brewery. But yes, that's, that's the trade organization's definition or limit of a microbrewery. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? 
Thank you. Thank you. Diane. Is there a motion? Charlie? Okay, so I'll move to send this to council with recommendation for approval with the caveat that uh, we'll get inf additional information if it's ready on the uh, uh, the assigned illumination portion, in which case we, and if it's not ready, we will pull that out. I would also encourage uh, a memo to the, uh, on the uh, formula as well. And I assume, are we gonna, st I guess the last piece of that is, so I'll move that, uh, but we do need to decide on point three versus point two five. Tonight? Uh, t or by next week. Okay, I'll second your motion. Okay. Further discussion? Uh, I'd, I'd just add on that point three versus point two five. It should, you know, if there is a majority or a supermajority that's going to do digital billboards, that the two numbers should be the same. That's the consistency that I'm looking for. If so. Okay. The ordinance was moved by um, Charlie, seconded by Dennis, with the copy with the. Uh, inclusion of language that we are looking at the impact on current businesses as well as including the formula f that uh, was discussed. Do you want that split, Mike? Uh, you know what, I'll recuse myself tonight. We'll deal with it uh, next week. Next week. Okay. okay. We, can we can split out the microbrewery portion if need be. Yeah. You know what, why don't we? Okay. That's, if you don't, I would okay. appreciate that accommodation. So the microbrewery portion is, I see it in a table of uses. Is there another? There's a definition. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just make my motion to split the two pieces as appropriate according to what the city attorney recommends so that we see two motions or two ordinances next week. Okay. One, one. Yep, there's a definition, and then it includes in the table of yeah, permitted yeah, uses. Yeah, just split it out. Okay. All right. So we'll take the first motion um, without the microbrewery language in it. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. And now we'll consider language for uh, microbrewery, which includes a definition and table of uses. And I'll recuse myself. Is there a motion for so approval? Moved. Okay. moved by Charlie. Seconded. Seconded by Dennis. Discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Same sign. Okay. That passes. Okay. Thank you. Last item on the agenda is resolution number 2015-09-049R. Resolution approving property tax rebates for certain properties within the Behringer Commons subdivision. Community Development, Libby Tyler. This is a follow-up action to the economic development agreement that was passed by council in August, uh, which picked up the um, property tax rebates for the Behringer Common subdivision from the previously existing annexation agreement. Um, as we noted at that time, we weren't able to include all of the eligible addresses because um, they had not already uh, requested the rebates, weren't in the seven year time frame which we were offering, uh, nor were these properties owned by the developer. So we were advised that um, these could best be accommodated by separate resolution. So we're uh, talking about nine different properties. Two of these are actually on their seventh year and were inadvertently left out of the agreement. So we've included them in this resolution. And then the other seven properties are, as I described, they're uh, vacant properties with the exception of um, one which has a building permit. And I would just um, remind the council that uh, we're talking about a short-term stopgap uh, for this resolution um, and when we expect our enterprise zone to take effect, which would be um, July 1st, 2016 at the latest. Any questions? Okay. Is there a motion? I'd move approval. Second. Okay. 
Moved by Mike Madigan, seconded by, was it Eric? Charlie. 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 Okay. Any further discussion? Mike? I just want to say thank you, Libby, and your staff for uh, putting this together. Uh, I really appreciate the work, and I know uh, the developer does as well. So thank you. You're welcome, and I um, want to mention also our legal department and finance department. We all work together on that. So. Everybody involved. I wasn't trying to leave anybody out. Huh. All those in favor of sending this to council, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Well, with no further business before the council, this meeting stands adjourned. <laughs>